welcome. This is Melissa Arma with a stock swoosh and I'm reviewing the second week of January. The week expiring January 14th. The results with a beginner risk, okay, of this second week. So this is all the options trades from the Gap Options newsletter. And if you took a beginner risk, which we're going to go over, 86% win ratio and beginner trader profits of 11,890. So let's go over each of the trades. <laughs> this is everything expiring this Friday the 14th. So there were 10 winners, zero break evens, two losers, and 12 trades. The average beginner risk here I'm using, again, you can risk less, you can risk more. Is a thousand though for this average return on investment 121 percent and again 86 percent win ratio with profits of 11,890. I get this question all the time you know because again I've been doing this a very long time now you don't have to take an advanced risk you can take a beginner risk again I'm using a thousand dollars here to show people what a thousand dollars can do if you want to risk that in the trades it's an average but you can risk more you can risk less I think a thousand is a good amount to get you some nice size and some of the things that are lower price expensive and then some things that end up costing slightly more you will be able to still get you know it's a good range I think <laughs> actually I think between a thousand and fifteen hundred is actually a good range um, so let's go over them I don't have the charts in here but I will flip back and forth to show you this was an active week this was called on January 5th, the QQQ's 394 puts that expired on the 14th. Again, we're usually doing the weeklies. So let's look at this. It was a put, it was a short. It cost $4.50. It was a little pricey for the Q's. Two contracts. Risk is 900 again because you have to stay within the defined risk. Again, if you had taken three, that would have been okay too. You got to, this isn't an exact science. You got to stay close within the range. Like, you can't take 10 and risk 4,500 if you're trying to risk 1,000. Do you know what I mean? Sold a 22 profit of 3,500. You would have made 389% return on in investment. So let's look at that. I called this one 10.30 in the morning. 394 Qs. So let's pull it up. Oh, we're falling here tonight. Okay. Here. So there you go. So I called this 1030. Oh no. No, here's one five. Here we go. 1030. And there we go. So again, we're doing momentum. A put is a short. You can see how this fell, and it was the 394s. So that trade worked. It was a nice move. Then we did the Facebook puts. Called this the same day, 330s. Again, this fell with the market. $5 was the cost. Two contracts, risk 1,000, sold at 14, profit 1,800. Return on investment 180%, another nice trade. Again, sometimes I will call multiples if I see we're going to get a market move, which I did here. Now let's pull up Facebook, 1-5. I mean, I remember this week, but let's just look at it. Oh, this is so crazy. Look at how... Well, okay, this was more than a month ago now because this was because this had the earnings. It's tanked on the earnings, but look at this. This was like 100 points above. Let's look at the fifth. Jeez, it's taking forever. Wow, this is really taking forever. 
All right, the fifth. So here, so you can see again, 330, right there, got the drop. Again, boom. And this may even not even look like much, but it was, it was a nice trade, you see. Then we did the NVIDIA puts. This is all this, this was all that same drop off. So again, I'm very good at reading the market. If I see the market direction is gonna go up or down, or I'm reading the gap in the market, either a bullish gap or a bearish gap, if I read it accurately, I will call a bunch of trades together with the market move. That's what I did with this, that's what I did with this one too. So the 280 NVIDIA's expired the 14th, it was puts, this was a short, this dropped too. So this was a little pricey, but again, it's NVIDIA. $8 for one contract, so you can take one, sold a 22, 1400 profit, 175% return on investment. Again, beautiful sell off along with the market and everything else that dropped. Then the next day, I called Netflix. I can pull that up. This was, this again looks nowhere near like this price because this had bad earnings. 550 puts, one six. Again, similar drop off. So you can do one that costs 1100. Sold a 22, 100% return investment. Take it in, get out. Let's look at this one. This was one six. Again, this, this has had earnings, fell big on the earnings. So this, I mean, these price points, isn't it interesting how going back, like, I didn't even think about this before because I didn't put the charts on here. Like even looking at this now, what has happened to some of these stocks since the first part of the year, since before all the earnings came out on these things, I mean, they have absolutely, they look kind of cataclysmic now. I mean, it's just been a catastrophe for these things. It's really something. Why this date is taking so long? My internet must be bogged down tonight. Okay. The six. Oh yeah, I remember this day. So it was this gap here. Yeah. But actually we we could have done that here. But anyways, I didn't call this one till here. Yeah. So this was the five fifties. And there's a drop. Then we did the QQQs that same day too. Again, sometimes I'll stack them. Then we did the 380s. Beautiful. $5 for two, 1,000, sold 11, 1,200 profit, 120% return on investment. Again, so you see, just go, I'm just gonna go back here. Like I had called the day before the 394s. Okay, this was the same expiration. Then I called the 380s. Like I could see it was on the move. Anyways, nice drop, same drop. Just a, a nice, beautiful momentum to the downside. Then the 466 spies, which was the six, it was around 10 o'clock. 470 cost, two contracts, 940, sold at 950, profit 960, 102% return on investment. Now let's look at the SPY. So this was the six. Again, I saw the cues were really gonna go. This was January. So again, this is more than a month ago. It's definitely gotta be my internet here. This is taking so long. really taking a long time. So 
January 6th. Right there, get the drop. There, get the drop. So it's a 466s. And then, a, and then a Friday called the Apple 172.50s. Again, you see how like I'm stacking these as we, we're going, going, going. Cost 250, four contracts, risk 1,000, sold 475, profit 900, return investment 90%. So again, all of these, I called these things with the market. Then on Friday, I also called the 460 spies. Again, this was on the move. So remember the Thursday, I called the 466s. 250, four contracts, 1,000, sold at 550, profit 1,200. You could have made 120% return investment. So whether you take a $1,000 risk or a $5,000 risk or a $10,000 risk, it's, it has to do with the size of your account and your comfort level with risk. But you, can, you could have taken one contract and risk $250 and still made money and made 300 bucks. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, actually. Then on Monday, I called another strike in these. I called the 375s. It was just a beautiful move. This one did not work. So this was, what happened with this one? 375. Oh, I remember what happened with this one. This was up, but you would have had to scalp it to get out. And I, I don't normally trade them that way. Yeah, this was the Monday. Here's what it did. You see how that was up? So we opened, dropped, low was 369. I think some people did get out. I think some people did get out of that. I do remember this day. This was the Monday. It, you see how it was up? It opened at 374.2, dropped to 369 and change, and then bounced. But my expectation was that it was going to continue. And we ended up continuing here. We did. But this expired on the 14th. But anyways, I do think some people did get out there. But I, you know, my expectation was that we were going to roll over. And we did. We did, but it took into the following week. Then Netflix 530s. Again, Monday the 10th, pre-market, I sent this out. This was all that same shebang. 575, two contracts, 1150, sold at 11,050 profit. This was a nice drop off. This did follow through. Let's look at that Netflix. Again, this is all, feels like so long ago. Because, I mean, if you look at the price of this, this is, you know, to do something at 530. This was the 10th. And this did go down into the, the, the drop. Here this was. It was a nice move there. Again, you see it broke 520, and that was the 530 puts. So even though the Qs didn't do that right that week, this did. Then I'm running the SPY 455s. Again, this did drop too, just like the Qs had the bounce. You could have got out of this with profit, but I really thought it would continue. It took into the following week. But anyways, this was a loss if you held it. If you scalped it, you could have got out with money. Tesla. If you have a certain risk, you couldn't do this trade. Why? It costs $31, $31 per contract. So this was the 980s. Let me go find that one. Again, this is all in that day. Oh, this is gonna take forever because this is just taking, gonna take forever for this data. Oh, no, there. Uh, this was the 10th. Same. So anyways, you couldn't have done it, but you see this did the same thing as the Q's here, but you have to be strict to your rules. So this would have been $3,100 for one. So you can't do it if your risk is 1,000. You know what I'm saying? But that 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 flipped around just like that Q did, that, that Monday Q. 458 spies, you could have made money in this. This did drop really fast, really big for the price of it. Again, this had a much, 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 much larger move. Sometimes when you're doing things farther away, the benefit is you pay less, okay? You pay less for it. And if it moves really quick, really fast, and it's far away, it does end up being a much bigger return on investment 
Now, it's not always that I call these like this on the same day or similar ones, but sometimes I do. We did that a couple times with Netflix, actually. So this was only 275. That was an 82% return on investment. Then the Amazon puts the 3150s. You could have done this way out of the price point of $56, but this did not work right, I don't think. No, I think this was a loser. So you saved yourself from this one. But one contract would have been $5,600. And that was my point. say that one just didn't go right here's where it went here's where that's where it went there this is where it went anyways you wouldn't have done it with a beginner risk so long story short win ratio 86 percent 10 winners zero break evens two losers and 12 trades because you couldn't have done a few of them that were out of the price point for a beginner risk, which is you know, whatever you decide. If you decide to risk 3,000 a trade, you could have done some 2,000, you have to decide. Again, how can you do something like Amazon if your risk is 1,000, you can't take one contract. It costs $5,600 that one. Beginner trader profits for this week, if you adhere to your rules and the risk, 11,890 with an average return investment 121%. That is adhering to the rules of the risk management, not doing the ones that were outside of it, staying within the parameters, and then also doing these trades. If you don't feel comfortable though, being in multiple things at one time, like the day that I called, the day that I called the most, I think, I was either three or four, I think, on the fifth. How many did I call on the fifth? One, two, three. Yeah, it was three on the fifth when I saw that we were starting to fall off. You, If you don't want to do three at once, then you don't have to. You, you don't have to. But for example, in the case of the Facebook, say you do two Facebooks. You do two. You could get out of one Facebook, hold the rest. There's another idea. Or you could do Facebook and the queues and NVIDIA, and you don't. You could get out of one in full and hold two or something like that. Again, because this had the drop off and the momentum of the follow through. So I'm just giving you ideas here for what you could do. But sometimes I will call a few in one day. You have to determine your risk per trade and your risk per day, per day also. So if you want to sign up for the options newsletter, it is a 12-month subscription for $6,999. The trades are emailed to you. There are no trials at all. If you want to sign up, you must email me for sign-up forms. If you want to do the six-month subscription, the half-annual subscription, it's $4,999. Trades are emailed to you. You can email me as well if you want to sign up. If you want to learn the strategy, then you have to sign up for the class. That is just a two-day course that's online where you learn the system, how I rate the gaps. How do I know uh, that something's going to occur like we saw here? Go back here to the, you know, in the market. I've really been reading this market well this year. You know, we, we've had good timing, which is very important with options, and we've had the direction right. With the exception of this flip around, but then we did get this. Again, that was a different week, which I'm just going over the week of the expirations of the 14th. But, you know, the reality is to see that something's going to happen before it does it, this idea that I can predict the directional bias is all based on my GAT 26-point rating system, which I teach in the Golden GAT course. So I'm not predicting that it's going to gap. I see the gap itself. Then I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. Like, there's stuff gapping tonight. I, just, I had Disney up here before I flipped over to this. You know... I'm not gonna rate this right now because I'm tired, but I will rate it in the morning. I don't know if I'm gonna do it because there's no point in rating it now until the morning. I will wait and rate it then. 
but I didn't know Disney was going to gap up. This is. It's closed at 147.28. Right now it's up at 157. It's gapping up 10 bucks, so thereabouts. It could have gapped down. This could be at 125. So I'm not in this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this before this. This could have gapped up or down. It's gapping up. But again, I predict where it's going to go after the gap based on the 26 point rating system. That is what I teach in the course. That is not the options newsletter, but I am calling trades based on that system. So it's it's allowed me the gap rating system that I do personally that I created and I teach the class has really allowed me to read the market so well. And I don't get it right all the time, but I get it right a lot more than anybody I have ever encountered or know or and I've met a lot of people being in television the last umpteen years. So it's it's it, it takes a lot of focus particularly in a challenging time where you're just having all these people saying all these things and then you have another situation where they're saying all these other things you know we saw such a bullish year in 2021 this is the whole year it's crazy what we did a million new highs kept going and the economic backdrop was <laughs> so bad in 2021 I mean, everyone kept saying the unemployment was going down, but really we're just jobs, the same jobs recovering from before the pandemic. Now this year, the market has clearly reacted in the first part of the year, which which we got that drop off. We got the whole thing. It's It reacted to, it's coming to reality. Now, is it going to, is that it? Is it all over after that? Are we back up? We're going to make new highs? I mean, it's very early in the year to predict. But I find that in reference to trading, it is so much easier to do things in a small minutia time frame. And even for options, the weeklies are small time frame. You can't do anything less than a week. I mean, they have in between, like you could do a Tuesday, um, you know, spy or something. I don't, I don't do those in between ones. But the thing is that a week is a short time for an option, to be honest with you, it really is. Like I'm not doing something a month out or a year or whatever. And for day trades, I'm in and out fast. But it's so much easier to predict where something's going to go short in a short period of time than it is in a long period of time. Like if you if I asked you, what are you going to eat for breakfast Saturday morning? You said, I have no idea, Melissa. If I said, what are you going to eat for breakfast tomorrow morning? You might already know. You might, you might already know. But if you got up at 6 a.m. and I asked you, what are you going to eat for breakfast at 7, an hour from then, you, you would definitely know. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot easier to determine shorter moves periods than it is the longer longer out like no one could have predicted COVID in 2020 no one could have predicted what the market did no one could have predicted any of that and I think people will be hard-pressed to predict the sell-off we had here actually at the beginning of this year all right have a good, good night everyone and email me if you want to sign up Lots of trades, great success this year, very excited. I will continue to try to show these beginner amounts for people who want to open up smaller accounts and want to get involved and want to do it. Call your broker, ask questions about opening up an options account. You can open up a cash options account. You do not need margin. If you have questions, email me, call your broker and sign up for the newsletter if you want the trades. Have a great day.